Okay, we are going to start the day with a quiz. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos, so this quiz is going to be on all the different um, tools for convergence and divergence that we have been practicing uh, from section 8.3 to section 8.5. This quiz is a little different. It's asking you a lot of uh, very conceptual questions to make sure you understand what each theorem is saying, condition versus conclusion. So you may use your notes as uh, stated. I'm going to scroll up. Feel free to pause and answer those questions. Make sure you read them twice, three times, four times to understand what you have to write. They're not that difficult. It's very simple, just making sure that you understand the uh, conditions of the theorem and also each one has a different conclusion based on the condition. All right, so, and this is four and five, so feel free to pause. Welcome back. We're going to... Um, so as I mentioned in the quiz, your test next week, you know, when it comes to these kind of questions, they will be more like the one on the homework, okay? The quiz is just to make sure uh, we all get the concept. All right, and then this quiz is due no later than Friday, 11.59 p.m. Thank you. Here's some information about exam number three. Feel free to pause so you can read through. Thank you. If you have any questions, email me. All right, now, tool number two, which is what I mentioned in the last video I will be covering today, uh, which is the second part of interval of convergence. So I decided I'm going to skip that uh, and spend more time on something more important. So since we've already covered the concept on how to find interval of convergence of a geometric series, that's going to be valuable uh, with this material that I'm about to go over. So sorry to disappoint you there. Okay, so let's see. This next lesson uh, teaches us how to construct a power series without using the tools of Taylor polynomial. If you remember in the last section, yeah, you had five questions. Uh, each one of them, you had to develop a Taylor polynomial expansion by doing a bunch of derivatives then plugging in all these coefficients and the formula in order to get a fifth degree approximation or a seventh degree approximation, whatever the question was. In this section, we're not even gonna do derivative. Uh, so it's kind of a shortcut, think of it that way. It's a quicker way, it's a more convenient way, but it's very limited, however. So we're only gonna concentrate or focus on uh, fractions for the first part anything of the form uh, a over 1 minus r, which is right here, tiny. Uh, so today we'll do that, and then the video will end, and then tomorrow on uh, tomorrow's video, tomorrow's lesson, I'll cover the derivative and the antiderivative, which are also uh, other tools to develop or to construct power series. All right, let's begin with uh, a little review of what a geometric series look like. So this is what we had in section 8.3. If you have a times r to the k, k starting from zero to infinity, provided that the absolute value of r, the common ratio is less than one, uh, this is the condition to guarantee that this geometric series will converge and it converges to the sum a over one minus r. So recall you had to use a over one minus r to figure out what the series converges to. What we're gonna do today is going backward. 
So we're going to be given a function, f of x, 1 over 1 minus x. A couple of things, a couple of very important areas we need to keep an eye on that needs to happen every time we have a fraction before we can use the formula is that this 1 in the bottom left corner needs to be there and also the uh, negative sign in between uh, those two terms in the denominator needs to be there. So I'll start my first example with something a little bit straightforward 1 over 1 minus x. Now this is a problem you guys did in uh, section 9.1 in the homework. If you go back and look at your homework notes Number five, the very last one, was asking you to use Taylor polynomial expansion to figure out the fifth degree, I believe, the fifth degree uh, polynomial expansion. So if you did that, and hopefully you simplified your answer completely, we're gonna actually prove today that what you got is actually correct, but it's gonna be much faster, okay? So, since the one on the bottom left corner is there, since the sign is negative, those two things allow us to move forward. So that means I can identify the top value to be A, and I can identify R to be my X. And then I just basically have to plug them into the formula. So A goes in the front. I always like to put the common ratio in parentheses, so the X raised to the power of K. And then don't forget that your subscript down here always is k starting at 0 and then to infinity. Once we simplify, we get this answer. So this is the power series. See how painless that was? Now, we're going to verify that this actually, when you expand it, uh, will give you... Uh, I'm going to expand it to the first six terms, which will give me a fifth degree polynomial expansion. Okay, so, um, if I go ahead and expand it to the first six terms, so when k is zero, x to the zero is one. When k is one, and so on and so forth, you get these six terms, which basically simplifies to this sum. Everything is positive in this case. So, is this what you got in the homework? 9.1, number 5, when you did all those derivatives, and you were sweating, right, trying to get the answer? Well, here it is, very quick and easy and short. It matches, it fits. What makes this process even uh, better and more powerful is that it gives you the general form, the general power series rather than just a fifth degree power series. Um, and that's, that's gonna be useful. Now, <clears throat> I'm kinda reviewing here. This is what you should have gotten, by the way, uh, in 9.1, number five, when you did all your derivatives and you plugged in the center, which was zero in each derivative. These are the different coefficients you should have gotten. Uh, and then when you plug them all in into the Taylor polynomial expansion and you reduce completely, there you go. That's the fifth degree polynomial, which matches what I have at the top here. Okay. So now the only thing that I'm missing here is uh, that I need to mention what the interval of convergence is. Uh, is for this particular power series. Remember that without the interval of convergence, without the domain, this equality does not mean anything. Right? These are true. This, these, these are equal to each other, provided there's a condition attached to it. Provided that the value of x that you choose to approximate is a is a number that's between one and negative one. And if you recall. In the homework number five uh, from the previous section, you were supposed to plug in 0.75, I believe that was. 0.75 was the value. So you can see 0.75 actually is in this interval. That's the reason why your answer converged to the actual value. It was kind of pretty close to it, but it was going to converge as we if we added more term. Okay? So that is that needs that's that's vital, that's important, and that needs to be always part of your answer. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick an, another example 
where let's say the sign in the middle is not a plus. Well, that's gonna be an easy fix. We could always rewrite a plus as a double negative, which now makes my R, whatever you see in the parentheses, negative x squared. My A is gonna be four still, in this case at the top here. And I'm ready to start. So I'm going to the summation starting from zero to infinity, writing the a outside of the parentheses. r, which is negative x squared, goes inside of the parentheses, so parentheses are very important here, raised to the power of k. Now here I'm kind of separating the negative one, which needs to be raised to the power of k, and x to the 2k. I'm separating that to show that when you actually expand this, what negative one to the power of k does is that it makes the signs alternate, plus, negative, plus, negative, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is what the power or the infinite series look like for this particular fraction. So it doesn't matter if my r is x or x squared or x cubed, I should always be able to write a power series. What I need next is the interval of convergence. So I will need to do the absolute value of negative x squared. But when I have the absolute value of negative four, that's really the same as the absolute value of negative one times the absolute value of four. I could kind of separate the two. And then the absolute value of negative one disappears because that just becomes one. So looking at the absolute value of negative four is really the same thing as looking at the absolute value of four. So I could use the same trick here. Looking at the absolute value of negative x squared means I could just look at the absolute value of x squared. Now in my, um, let's see, in, in, in my video from uh, yesterday on uh, interval of convergence of a geometric series, I did an example with a square on the x. And I said, if you, use a definition and you write x squared in the middle and then you trap it between negative one and positive one, there's gonna be a problem when you take the square root because the square root of a negative one will be uh, imaginary. So what I said instead, you could just basically take the square root of x squared uh, while it's still less than one without worrying about the left-hand side and then that becomes absolute value of x, and the absolute value of x is less than one, translates into x has to be between negative one and positive one. Okay, and that's what the interval needs to be in order for this equality to make sense, to be valid, all right? In my next example, I'm now choosing a fraction where the bottom left number is not one. So how do we go about fixing that? Well, one way to do this is to divide everything by that number. So I'm dividing everything by two, top and bottom. So when I do this, it forces the bottom left number to become a one, but it also changes my R and it also changes the top number. So once I identify that A is a half and R is X over two, which I have to keep in parentheses, so the power of K, I get my geometric series. And I want the absolute value of the radius to be less than one. So that one is actually pretty straightforward to uh, solve. Just multiply both sides by two, and then you'll get your inequality. Okay, so that's what we're doing in this lesson. I have five questions for you on the homework to kind of get some practice and try to figure out the power series without doing any derivatives, yay. So you get to use this nice little technique uh, to uh, write the equation, the infinite series as a geometric series, and uh, also do not forget to state the uh, interval of convergence. So tomorrow I'll be focusing on derivatives and antiderivatives. And so here are the uh, top four questions, so feel free to pause because I'm gonna go up in a minute. And here's number five. All right, well, hope you enjoyed the video and have some fun with those questions. Uh, email me your responses. 
uh, when you email me your quiz let me know when you would rather have the test Monday or Wednesday and also if you are done with this homework and you want to email it to me for points I'll have to check and make sure you did them right um, I've had some students email me homework uh, from the previous sections and if I notice the majority of them uh, of the problem is wrong or done incorrectly and that this student was gonna get a low score then I basically ignored ignored it and never graded it so that way it doesn't affect you But if I'm noticing that you're getting them right and that you're gonna get a good score uh, then I'll go ahead and give you that score and uh, and then uh, use that as part of your grade okay that's all for today that's all for now thank you and stay tuned for tomorrow's video bye for now